Friends, good evening. Thank you for joining us to another Gnostic Lab of Practical Application. This evening, we are going to practice uh, with a koan. And koans are enigmatic phrases. These are statements, phrases, enigmas that are thrown to the mind. And when the analytical aspect of ours seeks to try to decipher it, well, it will try and try and try until one of two things will happen. Either it will abandon it or it will fall on its knees, tired, exhausted. And in that, in that exhaustion of that, uh, of that psychological aggregate, those psychological aggregates, we then see a calmness, quietude, and serenity of the mind. The ego is very clever. And whenever we throw a koan to it, it would make an effort to try to analyze it, and it will try to start coming up with, with solutions, and uh, there will come a time in which it will try to abandon it. But it is our responsibility to continue driving intent and consistency and repost that koan to the mind to force once again that ego to face that until it eventually surrenders itself. So what is it that is a koan exercise? Because that's what we're going to do tonight. Well, Samael says, a koan exercise is something that we as students of Gnosis must profoundly study. And he says this because the moment that we face one of these enigmatic phrases, the ego will try to solve it. At some point, it will try to rebel itself, and it will give us an opportunity to comprehend the ego itself. But this is something that Zen Buddhists used to practice. And for them, this concept of koan is more of a mystical dialogue between a master and the disciple. There is a really interesting example of this in Samael's writings in the book, My Return to Tibet, in which he shares a story of a certain monk that came and approached Master Tung Shan, and the student asked, Who is the Buddha? To this question, the master answered, three chins of flax. There's another example in his writings where a Buddhist monk asked Master Xiao Chu, what is the meaning of the arrival of the Bodhisattva from the West? And the master replied by saying, the cypress is the one at the center of the garden. So you see, we hear this, and the first thing that, 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 that those thinkers within our psyche re respond is, what? What is this? <laughs> because this is something that the psychological aggregate does not anticipate. But what we see is that as the masters reply to the students in these examples, what they give them is an enigmatic answer. What we are seeking to do here is to empower the consciousness to experience the koan and for the consciousness to naturally come across and find the answer, the profound answer to that very meaningful question. But for that, the ego must fall surrendered. And for our purpose tonight, we would like to make use of this particular koan. And this statement, phrase, question that we're going to pose the mind is, if all things reduce to unity, to what does unity reduce to? As we do this exercise, what you will see is that the mind is never going to be able to solve this problem. The mind is never going to be able to comprehend the deep significance of what is a koan. But as the mind will try to comprehend it, it will 
it will fall defeated on its knees. As it does that, the mind then falls into a condition of stillness and silence. And whenever that stillness is present, when the mind ceases its projections, then it naturally becomes receptive. And as the mind becomes receptive, the, that thing that is no is what then arrives. Consistency behind this practice will allow you to see your essence, your consciousness, escape from the bottle of the ego. And as that happens, you will be able to experience that which is beyond time, that which is beyond the eternity, beyond good and evil. And that is the majesty of your spirit, of your innermost. So bring consistency and bring tenacity into the practice. Because remember, we will get out of these efforts exactly what we bring into them. So to make the most out of our practice tonight, let's go ahead and start by closing our eyes and by relaxing the body. Friends, I will invite you to set your feet flat on the floor. Allow your spine to rest comfortably on the back support of your chair. And rest your hands on your thighs. Let's start by taking a deep breath in one. Two. Now close your eyes. One. Two. One. Two. This is a good opportunity to make ourselves aware of our physical body. At this time of the day, well, there may be some things that may be causing some discomfort. It could be your watch, it could be your socks if they're too tight. In some cases, the belt, maybe a ponytail, maybe some heavy earrings. Whatever it may be, give yourself a moment and relieve your physical body from that physical distraction. Then let's go ahead and take another deep breath in one, two, and let's make ourselves aware of our psychological state. Let's make ourselves aware of our current emotions. Dear friends, we know that some of you, as you move along, dealing with the many challenges that life brings, some of you have two jobs, some of you have extended responsibilities that go beyond your home and those extend into the homes of your parents, perhaps of your neighbors. And sometimes we find that our emotional state is that of exhaustion. And that exhaustion tends to bring a very delicate equilibrium within our emotional center. A delicate equilibrium becomes very useful because sometimes some words would tilt us into the sides of frustrations. Other times some words will tilt us into the sides of joy and gratitude. And it is important that we keep watch 
of those egos that are then at the helm of the machine. How is it that they change seats? How we may go from indifference to then feeling grateful or from indifference to feeling frustrated or uncertain or sometimes depressed. Some of you may have gotten here today after achieving some small victories, whether it has been at work or dealing with family matters or any of the other challenges that life brings. And then some other of us, well, we may be here carrying the residual effects some difficult moments that we may have experienced today. We want you to remember that whatever emotions you're experiencing, whatever joys or sorrows you experience today, these things, they are all temporal. And they come and go just like the swing of a pendulum. Somehow tells us that when we're happy, we know that uh, we must remain watchful because sooner or later we're going to be sad and that if we're sad we should not despair because more sooner than later we're going to be happy once again and our main interest is to disconnect from the mechanicity of the pendulum so know and be certain that you have the opportunity of standing at the center of that circle of Tao where rather than being bound by the swing of the pendulum, you can contemplate the swing of the pendulum and at the same time empower your consciousness to observe your thoughts, your emotions, your habits, the ego that drives them. And even beyond that, from where does that ego project itself? Whether it is from the emotional center or the intellect, whether it is from the sexual center, from habits, from instincts. So when it comes to your emotional state, let's certainly be grateful for the emotional state that we find ourselves in. Because we know that these emotions, they come and go. And when we are grateful for them, then we receive with gratitude and with gratefulness the good moments and the sour moments as well. So knowing this, it is perfectly fine if you want to allow just a faint smile to draw on your face and with that let's take another deep breath in one, two, Let's go ahead and focus on relaxing our body. Let's bring the attention of our consciousness to the beatings of our heart. Notice that without placing any effort at all, we instantaneously notice the gentle beating of our heart so let's go ahead and project the palpitations of our heart up to the tip of our nose as we experience those palpitations of our heart and the tip of our nose. 
we experience them with gratitude. Because we have all come here once again, united in a single heart, as a global family. And grateful for this new moment. For the fact that we can see and feel these projections. Without placing any effort, we allow those palpitations to transition from the tip of our nose onto our right ear. And just like that, that perception goes from our nose to our right ear. And as you perceive that, focus your attention on your breathing. We breathe in through the nose. We breathe out through the nose. And with every exhalation, we allow the physical body just to sink slightly deeper onto that chair. Now let's allow that perception to go from our right ear so that we can feel the palpitations of our heart on our right hand. We also continue to focus on our breathing. And with every exhalation, we allow for any tension, any stress just to dissolve and dissipate. We keep our eyes relaxed. We keep our jaw and the muscles of our face relaxed. And we only focus our attention on perceiving what the consciousness enables to perceive. And now we allow those palpitations to transition from our right hand onto our right foot. We continue to focus on our breath. And by now you will notice that the breathing has become almost imperceptible.
the flow of the breath is gentle and silent. And we simply allow the consciousness to perceive those palpitations, something that happens so effortlessly. And now we transition that perception from our right foot onto our left foot. We continue to focus our attention on our breath and we allow our breathing to happen naturally without any strain, just simply to follow, flow effortlessly. And as we perceive in our left foot We allow that perception of those beatings of our heart to transition then from our left foot onto our left hand. By now you would also be experiencing that gentle sensation that manifests throughout the body when the body is adequately relaxed. It is a gentle softness, a warmth, a very subtle vibration that is very particular of a good state of relaxation. We continue to focus on our breathing. We continue to allow the breathing to just flow effortless and uninterrupted. And after perceiving the palpitations of our heart in our left hand, We allow them to transition onto our left ear. It is always curious to see how the body follows the flow of energy. How is it that when we combine our objective imagination with our willpower, both of them in harmony with each other, how simply the vitality and the physicality follow that direction?
and after perceiving those palpitations in our left ear, we once again bring them to the tip of our nose. And now that we perceive them once again in the tip of our nose, we release that perception. We allow that perception to dissipate. And we simply embrace the sensation of relaxation that is experienced throughout the body. And in this state of physical calmness, in this state of emotional tranquility, we say, Divine Father, Father of mine, you who are my true being, you who are my internal God, we ask of you and we beg of you for your contribution in this practice. Let it be you, Divine Father, the dominating entity making use of this physical vehicle to which we offer you as we offer our personality so that you may officiate in this exercise give us father the opportunity to bring this koan to the depth of our consciousness Allow us the opportunity to experience the exhaustion of the ego, to see it fall defeated onto its knees. And we ask that if it is according to your will that you grant us the opportunity to experience the emancipation of the consciousness even if it is just for an instant. Let it be you, Father, the one who officiates. Let it be you, the one who sits, the one who breathes. And we ask of this in your holy name. It would be suitable for us to create a good circle around us to materialize in our immediate environment a flaming star. Because we know that as we do this, any tenebrous entities will naturally flee and not bring about any disturbance into the mind. Let's sing the mantra Krim Krishnaya. Krim Krishnaya. Govindaya, Kopihana, Vaya Vaya, Swaha. Let's practice that again. Klim Krishnaya, Govindaya, Kopihana, Vaya Vaya, Swaha. Let's 
Let's do it one last time for the sake of practice. Klim Krishnaya Govindaya Gopihana Vaya Vaya Swaha And as we become ready to exercise this practice, let's sing together the mantra Om Masi Padme Yum. Om Masi Padme Pardon me, 
all things reduce to unity, to what does unity reduce to? If all things reduce to unity, to what does unity reduce to? If all things reduce to unity, to what does unity reduce to? If all things reduce to unity, to what does unity reduce to?
if all things reduce to unity, to what does unity reduce to? If all things reduce to unity, to what does unity reduce to? If all things reduce to unity, to what does unity reduce to? If all things reduce to unity, to what does unity reduce to? If all things reduce to unity, 
to what does unity reduce to? Let's take a deep breath in one, two, and very gently wiggle your toes and your fingers. Very well. So dear friends, this has been our practice today in a practice with a koan. Thank you, everyone, for being here with us this evening. We wish you a very good weekend and may all beings be happy. Have a good night.